Hey everybody, wanted to do a quick little video on experiment eight where we're gonna be doing a titration. And I know most of you weren't able to do those last semester, so I thought I'd do a little quick refresher video for you. So we're gonna be using our burettes and we're gonna need a burette stand and a burette clamp. The burettes are stored with deionized water. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna empty our burette and I'm going to just do this all in a waste speaker right now. So we're going to be using thiosulfate as our titrant. So one of the first things you want to do is you want to condition your burette. So I have a funnel that does not fit, but that's okay. And conditioning our burette, whoops, make sure the stopcock is closed. And we're going to put in just four or five mils of our thiosulfate or the titrant that we're going to be using. And we're just going to kind of rotate and kind of coat the inside of our burette with our titrant. So we're getting rid of the water this way. And as we do this, we also want to make sure that we condition the pipette tip as well. So we're going to let some of that flow through the pipette tip, the burette tip, excuse me. And we're going to condition it a second time. And just kind of rotating the burette and draining it. And we'll do it a third time for good measure. You know, and if you can see, I'm just adding about that much of my titrant for, you know, five mills, five or six, seven mills, letting some through the tip, and there we go. So now, we're not going to dilute our thiosulfate at all or change the concentration, so now we can fill up our burette. cheat. I'm just using DI water, which is why I don't have my goggles on, um, but I just wanted to show you the process. When you fill your burette, you don't want to fill it or try to go exactly to the zero line. That would create bias in your readings. Just go somewhere between, say, zero and five mils. We're going to put it in our burette holder and then we're going to read the bottom of our meniscus and get our initial burette volume. Okay, so there's our thiosulfate. We have a flask and we're going to be adding a bunch of things to our flask, but one of the main things to remember in when we're doing this titration, the iodate that we're getting for our sample, that's going to be our limiting reactant. So that's what we're going to titrate against. The thiosulfate is our titrant, so that's going to be a very precise and known volume. The iodate is going to be our limiting reactant. We're going to add some acid, but that's going to be an excess reactant. So when it says to measure out 10 mils of it, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect 10 mils. I'm using a 10 mil graduated cylinder for that. We also want to add five mils of starch which again is gonna be our color indicator, so it's not part of the chemical reaction. It does not need to be quantitative. About five mils is great. Our potassium iodide is gonna be a solid. Um, you can use one of the top loading balances. Um, so again, that doesn't need to be super precise. Um, the thiosulfate, um, not the thiosulfate, excuse me, the calcium iodate that we're going to be measuring, um, we want 10.00 mils. We want a lot of precision on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using our 10 mil volumetric pipette, and we've done that before. So we've got our pipette bulbs and our 10 mil pipette, and so we're going to pipette in 10 mils into our reaction flask. So once we get our flask all prepped,
prepped up and we have all of those reactants in our flask. If you want, you can use a stir plate and get that stir bar going. And you wanna make sure it's a really slow stir. We don't want a tornado. We don't want any splashing or splattering, um, which is one reason why we like to do titrations in flasks that have a narrow neck in it and not a beaker. In case there is any splattering or anything, it's gonna stay inside the flask. Or what you can do is you can just hand swirl it and using one hand, just kind of swirling the flask and the other hand, managing the burette. What I recommend is doing your first trial and doing a quick and dirty trial where we're just gonna kind of speed through this and not be super, super careful. And that's gonna give you a ballpark of roughly how many milliliters you're gonna need of your titrant. And so let's say we do our quick and dirty and it is gonna be, let's say 18 mils or 18.5 mils. That gives you an idea of what does the color change look like and about what volume are you gonna need for the next titrations. Since we're using the exact same amount of our limiting reactant every time, theoretically, we should use the same amount of titrant. So then if we used 18 mils for our quick and dirty, what you could do on your next trial is go really, really fast for the first 15 mils. Just open up that valve, let it go down to about 15 mils or so, and then what you can do is start slowing down and letting a little out, waiting for that color change, swirl it, let a little more, swirl it, and you would kind of slow down. You're gonna notice that when you first add some titrant, when you're getting near that endpoint, the color is gonna change, but then go back to the way it was. And as you get closer and closer to that endpoint, that color change lasts a little bit longer or is a little bit um, more persistent. So that's when you wanna start going drop by drop and just really being careful. And there's a couple of ways you can really slow down if you go, um, to get to that point, to get a really good end point, is you can open that valve just a little bit and just to where a drop is on the tip of the burette. And what you can do is you can touch the inside of your flask and then squirt down with some DI, right? Because we care about the moles of iodate and the moles of thiosulfate. If we add water, it's not gonna change the stoichiometry or the chemical reaction. So you can rinse down the side of your flasks with some DI get that one drop in there and see if it changes color or not. Another way you can do um, a really finite small amount of titrant is to split a drop in. I like to hold my burette with one hand and if you spin that valve really quickly, you can get half a drop. Um, but you gotta do it quickly. Um, you don't want to get stuck in the open position and add half a mil or something like that. So there's a little bit of practice that goes along with it. Now, I'm not going to expect you to be perfect because you haven't titrated before in Chem 1A. Um, so I'm really not going to be evaluating you on the preciseness of your results, but it's going to be great practice because we're going to do titrations again in our next experiment. Okay. So take this opportunity to become comfortable and, you know, become better at doing your titrations and it'll pay off. Okay, I hope that helped refresh some of your memory and give you a little bit of idea about how the lab is going to work. Um, we're going to end up doing um, six quality titrations, maybe a couple of quick and dirties. Um, so you're going to get a bunch of practice this week. Okay, I'll see you in lab.